What is going on college sports fans? Welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at your guys' hot takes heading into this college football season. We're going to do a few more throughout this season. We do hot takes for college basketball as well. A ton of college sports content coming here on the channel. You don't want to miss it, so make sure you guys subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into our first hot take of the video. Our first one's coming in here from Manny Man, and he says Colorado makes it to a bowl game this year. And right off the bat, I'm just going to say I agree with this one. But it is not that hot of a take. Their win total is sitting at like five and a half right now. I'm a big Deion Sanders fan. I think that what he's doing at Colorado, it's going to take some time. But I think that they improve enough from last year to go at least six and six and make a bowl game. I think even though they don't have the most talented roster, even in the Big 12, I think Shador Sanders is going to be enough to at least help propel this team to a 6-6 six and six record and Colorado will make a bowl. So a good take, but not that hot of one. Our next one is coming in here from Gok Game, and he says, neither Ohio State or Oregon will win the Big Ten this season. Now, I think that this is definitely much hotter of a take, but it's not extremely hot. I mean, Ohio State and Oregon, not only top teams heading into the Big Ten this year, top five teams heading into the year in the entire country. So to say one of them won't win the Big Ten Championship is kind of a hot take because they're, they're just two, the two most talented teams in that league. You could say Penn State or Michigan, definitely on that next tier, definitely top 10 teams, but I don't agree with this one. I think Ohio State's the most talented team in the country, and Oregon is not far behind. I think one of them will win it, but not a horrible take. I could definitely see a Penn State or a Michigan possibly winning it this year. Our next one is coming in here from H Dub Vibes, and he says Florida will make the college football playoff this year. Now, it is the expanded playoff this year, so we do have 12 teams making it, and we should see probably around three, at least three, probably four. SEC teams make it to the college football playoff, but I don't see Florida as one of those. I think that this is a pretty hot take. Not only does Florida have a pretty hard schedule this year, but I just don't think that they are as talented as a lot of these other teams that are in the SEC. They should have a pretty decent defense. I think Graham Mertz, he has the experience. I think Florida should get to a bowl game, but then you got teams like Florida State in the non-con. It's just still a pretty tough schedule here for the Florida Gators. It would very much shock me and a lot of team people, probably the entire country, if Florida was able to sneak into the playoffs. Billy Napier, their head coach, just seems like he was just hired, but he's heading into his third year as the Florida Gators head coach. He is on the hot seat heading into this year, so if he does make the playoffs, that would 100% save his job, but I don't see it happening. I think it's going to be close. I think he's going to go around 7-5, and five, and he could possibly get canned for 7-5 and five at Florida this year but they could give them one more year. I don't think they're making the playoff though. We got one coming in here from the Blunt Podcast, and he says, with all the talent, Ohio State will still lose three to four games and Ryan Day will get fired. Now, I will say, this is a pretty hot take saying Ohio State's gonna win three or, or lose three or four games this year, but if they do lose three or four games, Ryan Day is 100% out of there because not only are they the preseason favorites? If they're not the favorites, they're right behind Georgia as number two to win the national championship this year. But if they lose three games, that means they're not making the college football playoff, which would be a huge disappointment. And that in itself would be enough to can Ryan Day. But that probably also means that they are losing the game against Michigan for the fourth year in a row. And that cannot happen if you are a Ohio State football coach. I think not making the playoffs, losing to Michigan, both of those in itself are probably enough to get Ryan Day canned, and yeah, so I think if they lose three or four games, he's definitely out of there, but I don't see it happening. I think that they, if they don't go undefeated, I think that they maybe lose on the road at either Oregon or Penn State and go 11-1, and one, still make the playoffs. I think that they are at least in the final four of this year's playoffs this year so I, I think this is a pretty hot take i don't think it's going to happen but i do like i do like the boldness we got one coming in here from ashton and he says texas state will make the playoffs i know what you guys are thinking texas state make the playoffs that's not going to happen come on it's texas state they're not even a power four conference team but 
a group of five team will make the playoff every year in this new format. So all they have to do is be the best group of five team. I don't actually think it's that outrageous of a take to think that they won't be the best group of five team this year. Now, there are a lot of other really good group of five teams, but Texas State is going to have a good record this year. It's definitely possible, so I could see this happening. I don't think it's extremely hot. I have some other group of five teams that I would pick over them, but if Texas State does become the best group of five team and sneak into the playoffs, it wouldn't surprise me too much because I do know heading into this year they are a pretty good team. Our next one is coming in here from Groovy Gopher, and he says Indiana beats Michigan and Washington at home and make their first bowl game since 2020. Back in 2020 when they had, that's right, Michael Penix Jr. had a really good year, haven't made a bowl game since. I think that it is possible that they could get back to one. They do have Curtis Rorick as their quarterback this year. The transfer from the Ohio Bobcats had a pretty good career there so far. I think he's actually a pretty good quarterback. I think Indiana could definitely make a bowl game, but the really hotness of this take comes in when he says they will beat Washington and Michigan. Now they do have them both in Bloomington at home, so it is possible. Michigan, you know, lost J.J. McCarthy, lost Harbaugh as their head coach, but they still are going to have easily a top 10, probably a top 5 defense, bringing back their star running back in Donovan Edwards. I still think this Michigan's team is going to be a top 10 team this year, so I don't think you guys win that one. The Washington one is interesting. They are losing a lot on offense. They are bringing back, or they are bringing in a transfer from Mississippi State and Will Rogers at quarterback, who can sling it, and a new head coach as well from Arizona, who's done some great things down there. So well-coached team, but I do think Washington could be on upset watch heading into Bloomington, especially if Curtis Rorick. Plays as good as he did a couple years ago at Ohio. If he can do that at the next level with Big Ten football, I think Indiana could definitely make a bowl game. But still, to beat Washington and Michigan makes this a pretty hot take, but I think it's not a bad one. We got one coming in here from Tyler, and he says, Oregon wins it all this year, and Dylan Gabriel, their quarterback, wins the Heisman. Now, this one, at first glance, not that hot of a take considering Oregon is definitely a top five team as far as national championship odds and Dylan Gabriel is definitely a top three to five player to win the Heisman this year but he is going to have to play really good in order to win the Heisman and get this Oregon team to win it all. I do think Oregon is going to make the playoffs this year. Even if they don't win the Big Ten, I think that they can still make, sneak into the playoffs considering I think the Big Ten, like the SEC, is going to get three or four teams in the playoffs this year. I think Oregon will be one of them, but can they make it all the way to the end and win it all? They are going to see Ohio State in the regular season. That is in Eugene, so it is going to be a home game for them. I think that it is possible Oregon can win it all, and if they do, Dylan Gabriel is definitely going to be a Heisman contender. So pretty good take, but still pretty hot because Oregon, can they get it done? Do they have all the ta they do have all the talent, but do do they have more talent than Ohio State? Do they have more talent than Georgia? I'm not so sure but it is definitely possible. Our next one's coming in here from Coleslaw. He says Alabama will miss the college football playoff. This is actually a pretty hot take, but Nick Saban did retire. They're bringing in their new head coach and Keelan DeBoer over from Washington, but look what he did at Washington, man. He was undefeated in the regular season last year, took them to a national championship game where they lost to Michigan last year. That is a really good replacement if you are replacing Nick Saban. And he has, he helped Michael Penix have an outstanding year last year. Finished second in the Heisman race. Helped Washington, like I said, undefeated in the regular season. I think he's going to do outstanding things with Jalen Milrow. I think Alabama's probably going to make the playoffs this year, but I don't think it's a horrible take, and here's why. Like I mentioned earlier, I think the SEC is going to get three or four teams into the playoff. I think Georgia, probably going to make it. Texas, probably going to make it. Other than that, you're looking at teams like Alabama, Ole Miss, uh, possibly an LSU, a Missouri, teams like that. Tennessee maybe sneaking in there if their freshman Nico is playing at a very high level as a freshman. But I think Alabama is going to be one of those three or four teams to make it. 
So I disagree, but I don't think it's a horrible take. Given no more Nick Saban, if Jalen Milrow doesn't turn out, uh, take the step that we expect him to this year under Kalen DeBoer, I could see Alabama possibly going like nine and three, missing out on the SEC championship game and missing out on the playoff. But I do think that they will be one of those three or four teams from the SEC to make the playoffs this year. Our next one's coming in here from Mr. Melons, and he says Missouri will surprise everyone this year and make it to the second round of the college football playoff. Like I talked about, Missouri is definitely in the mix as one of those SEC teams to make the playoffs this year. They're returning Luther Burden, one of the best wide receivers. They're returning Brady Cook at quarterback, who took a big step up last year and is looking to take another big step and become one of the top quarterbacks in the country. And Missouri's actually been playing pretty good in the trenches as well. So I think that they have a good shot at making it to the college football playoff. Now, I don't think that they will win the SEC championship game, which means I don't think they're going to have a first round bye. So they will be playing in the first round of the playoffs, which is where this gets a little bit hot. It is going to depend on matchups. You know, if Ohio State wins the Big Ten Championship and they have to play a team like Oregon in the first round, do I think that they can win? I'm not so sure. But if they just bear, say they make it to the SEC Championship game and lose and they get the fifth or sixth seed and then they play the group of five uh, team that gets the first, uh, that makes it to the playoff, I could see Missouri possibly getting that win. So it depends on the matchup, but I don't think that this is too hot of a take. And I'm actually going to agree with you here. I think that Mr. Mellons is onto something here. I think Missouri is a sleeper to not only make the playoff, but win a game in the playoff. I like this take a lot. We got a couple more, but our next one's coming in here from Ben, and he says Dylan Riola will win the Heisman this year as a freshman at Nebraska. This one is extremely, extremely hot, but Dylan Riola is an extreme talent. Five-star quarterback heading over to Nebraska to play for Matt Rule. He is going to help Nebraska football kind of get back to that level of play that they were at. Now, will he do it as a freshman? I believe that they will get back to a bowl game this year, maybe win six to eight games. I don't think it's going to be enough to win like nine or ten games. I think you got to go at least nine and three to win the Heisman. I don't think Dylan Raiola is going to be that level of good in his freshman year. I think he's going to be good, but he is a true freshman. He was recruited by Georgia, USC. He was deciding between those, ended up going to Nebraska. So that tells you the level of player that he is at the quarterback position. I think he's going to be really good for Nebraska. I just don't think he's going to be Heisman level good. I'm going to have to disagree with this one, but I do hope Riola is really good for the Cornhuskers. And he could possibly be in the Heisman race over the next couple of years, but just not in his freshman year. Our next one's coming in here from Sean Oakman, and he says, Baylor makes the college football playoff. Right off the bat, I'm going to have to disagree with you here. Baylor is projected to be one of the worst teams in the Big 12 this year. Dave Aranda is one of the coaches on the hottest seat in the country this year. Like, if they are as bad as they are projected to be, then he's going, he's going to be gone. Uh, they're going to be looking for a new head coach. However, they do have a transfer quarterback, I think from Toledo, I want to say, who is a pretty good quarterback. And, you know, you never know. Last year, a team like West Virginia, they were projected to be last in the Big 12. Neil Brown, their head coach, was on the hot seat. They were only projected to get three or four wins. They came out and got nine wins in the Big 12. The Big 12 is always up for grabs for college football. Do you think that Baylor can, you know, do what West Virginia did last year and Dave Aranda can do what Neil Brown did and pull himself off of the hot seat from getting fired by putting together an eight or nine win season? I think it's possible, but even with eight or nine wins and saving his job, I don't think that's still going to be enough to be a top 12 team in the country and make the playoff. So either way, even if Baylor does surprise us, I don't think it's going to be enough to make the playoff. So I'm going to have to disagree with this one. And our last hot take is coming in here from Big Semi Trailer Barbecue. What a name. But he says, Notre Dame finishes the season with five losses. And I actually pulled up their schedule so I can give you guys a little bit of breakdown of what I'm seeing. Opening game is going to be 
a big one. It is even odds. It is a straight pick em on the betting lines. Notre Dame and Texas A&M in College Station. That is going to be a huge game to determine how many wins this Notre Dame team could get. They're going to have to win that first one if they are going to want to, you know, set the pace because there are a lot of other tough games down the road. You look at Florida State at home down the road. Even Louisville at home should win that one. But it's not going to be an easy one. Louisville is going to be pretty good. Purdue on the road. Purdue is not particular, particularly one of the best teams in the Big Ten. But going there on the road with Hudson Card as their quarterback could be a sneaky one there. You can't let that one slip. And then other than that, you're looking at USC on the road. Even if they lose USC, Florida State, and Texas A&M, that's still only three losses. I really can't see five losses on the year for them. I think that they're probably going to win at least one of those games Texas, between Texas A&M, uh, Florida State, and USC. They should win at least one of those as well. I'm looking at a bare minimum of a 9-3 and three for Notre Dame. I don't see five losses on the schedule. I think more likely they're going to go 10-2 and two this year with Riley Leonard coming in as the quarterback. He's kind of a dual threat, the transfer from Duke. I don't know, guys. I don't like this take. I think I see, at worst... Notre Dame going 9-3 and three this year. Let me know what you guys think, though. But that's going to do it for this Hot Takes video. Let me know which hot take you guys agree with or which one was the most outrageous one. You couldn't believe that somebody actually said that. Let me know that down below in the comment section. And let me know if you guys want to see more hot takes. All you got to do is pay attention to when I make a community post asking for them. Comment it there on the community post, and I will make sure... I try to get you in the next video. So that's going to do it. Subscribe if you guys are new. I'm out.